This is uh, dawn over uh, Percy Island. It's a, a bit rocky today. This is my last day on the island. Uh, the weather forecast today is from about the uh, southeast at uh, 20 to 25 knots. And then tomorrow it's coming round to the east at about 15 knots. So that's a good day, I think, to uh, carry on to uh, to uh, Great Keppel Island. I've been here uh, in the bay uh, three days now, and uh, there's this uh, boat over here. It's a trimaran called Wild Thing, and uh, definitely is you know a speed machine and. Uh, a guy bought it, he was bought it in a wheelchair because it was the only boat he could stand up in, in, uh, in the middle and he wanted something a bit fast. He uh, got motor neurone disease, some bacteria just, you know, destroyed his nerves and uh, he was in a wheelchair and getting fed for a while and anyway he's recovering and he's, he's getting, uh, slowly getting recovering so he bought this thing in Airlie Beach and he's gonna sail it back down to Brisbane and he's gonna live on it. You know, he's uh, he's you know he's just got nobody. You know, he came over here, he's Russian and you know he, he doesn't know anybody, he hasn't got a mum or dad. So anyway, he's uh, managing on this thing, I don't know financially what he's doing, but anyway, he's having a great time and uh, everything's a battle and when he first came here and he had, you know, I met him in the bay, his outboard was not working and uh, his autopilot wasn't working and he's got a crack button on the uh, main or a, a car so we've, I've been working on it every day for two days, I nearly worked on it solid, you know, trying to get his outboard going which was a major battle because it had been seized, it was, you know, four days it had been since it was under the water and so you had to kind of get it in the cockpit, flush it out with uh, petrol in the, through the cylinders and rock it until you, until you got it unseized and then pour petrol down a carburetor and, you know, keep pumping it out the uh, cylinders. And Anyway, we got it going and uh, running rough and then another uh, guy on one of the other boats, uh, I didn't know how to get the carburetor off, I looked and looked and I thought, no, I'm not going to get involved in this and he came over, Stuart, and and uh, clean the uh, carburetor and the thing works like you know better than it did before and uh, then we once i'd done that we had to uh make a better mount for the uh outboard so that he didn't drown it when it uh, when he was sailing so we've done that and so he can pull it up because he's too weak to lift his outboard so it has to be done by the winch and uh then the next job was to get his autopilot going which uh, had to make a new bracket and uh, anyway, got it all done and uh, we're going to go sailing uh, tomorrow, I think. I think he's going to set off as well. I'm going to go anyway and uh, I think it's the wind to go on. If he doesn't come, well, he can, you know, it's, it's, it's his uh, decision. So anyway, that's what we're up to. And uh, in the bay there is uh, quite a nice uh, boat here, you know, and I'm going to kind of additional... Uh, 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 you know, round stern job, motor sailor, uh, and uh, you know, go anywhere boat sort of thing. And then the rest of them are catamarans and uh, with retirees or your families on board. You know, there's two, one with an engineer and his family, and then there's uh, a guy that grows grapes in Western Australia, and he's here with his catamaran and his family. And uh, I haven't really met the others, but most of the others are retirees. Coming on round, we got one uh, catamaran out here. I, I'm not sure the story of that, but I think it's a retirees on there. And then got one motor cruiser came in last night. They only motor cruisers usually only start stop here one night and carry on. And uh, and then I've got one trawler, which is right next to me here with his uh, with his uh, his uh, generator going and you know rattling all night and uh, keeping his fridge cold. And uh, I'm on Middle Percy Island in the uh, a-frame hut and in the a-frame hut people uh, leave their boat names uh, every you know somebody everybody that comes here has uh, welcome to uh, carve out a boat their boat name and hang it in this uh, shed so 
you've got one here which is tailor made Ian and Becky and Nikki and Ben plus Kelly and Taylor in 1997 this one here Easy Rider I came up saw them on in 2015 and uh, they've got down here 2015 uh, and 2017 they put on here as well so they've been come up twice this one here is Quasar uh, E and J Hall KP Gambling and KR Ashton so it must have been a fair sized boat to have four, fa four couples on there uh, or three couples and a son uh, done on a bit of turtle shell it's second wind Tony and uh, Robin in uh, October 2018 so that's about now you know so old ones uh, this is uh, Wines of Dawn, uh, Noosa, and that was 2002. And this one is in a Hobart uh, double image, Hobart, uh, 1001. Chameleon, 05, from Hobart. And Bugger Works, Gone Sailing. Bugger Work, Gone Sailing, uh, that was 2003. Just run you through this side here, you know, you're welcome to pick a coconut here and take it back you know they've been just left there for the yachties and uh, there's all the signs they're just everywhere in here any any place you can put a sign somebody's put one all right up here on the ceiling and uh, there's a boat we'll called Rosa here uh, Tony Evans from Malula Bar in 2005. I was hooked on the first day. This is where it all happens in the evening, out the back. Uh, there's a thing where you can put a uh, uh, kind of big, you know, tin, sorry, an iron cast uh, pot on. And uh, a, one of the people that lives on the island uh, does goat stew. And uh, we just uh, bring our own vegetables and he puts those in and he supplies the goat and uh, does a really nice job and uh, there would have been about 30 people all sitting around here and on this table here all chatting away uh, having goat stew so if you're coming here to a uh, thing you've got to kind of organize enough people so that you can uh, they'll put on a goat stew and uh, it's very good Uh, the, the, the people at the uh, homestead that uh, you know uh, live up there and uh, manage I mean, caretake this island they they do a wonderful job you know you just got to look at this road uh, you know this is this is absolutely uh, impeccable and all the uh, washouts are uh, in and uh, you know make of keep this this road I've been walking up it for about the last seven years and you know, it has cyclones and everything, but this road's always kept impeccable all the way up to the homestead. It, they do, you know, it must take quite a long time, you know, with a machine to keep it like this, but uh, they do an impeccable, you know, they do a great job of, of caretakering the island. And uh, I went down to the boat harbour uh, and was looking for a scrap to, to help uh, Antonelli for his autopilot, a bit of aluminium or something like that. You know, I really had to search hard to find a piece it's all tidy down there there's no junk you know and they've had boats in there being repaired but they seem to take it all away so he makes them take it all away and put it on their boat their rubbish and take it back to the mainland the same with all the yachties have to take all their bottles and litter so there's no dump up here everything gets taken back here's a washout pit uh, you know you have to climb up it pretty steep over it and there is uh, here's the gully to uh, you know with a trap and everything in it to uh, take the silt so that it uh, doesn't uh, erode the place and the water doesn't run down the roads you know it takes a lot of work to do this and to keep it up but obviously this has all been just done newly because uh, it's uh, coming on for the wet season now so you know he's put he's worked on the road at the right time of the year and got his uh, his bump in and his and his uh, silt trap there basically and you can see that uh, 
when it's been really raining it's filled up and it's just running out into the uh, in you know in between all the trees and everything so it's not actually running off down the hill and it's uh, you know he's, he's he's doing a very good job you know maintaining this this is prickly pear and uh, it was a huge problem in the grazing in the sheep country uh, back in I'm sure it was in about the 40s and uh, round about the depression so probably a bit earlier than that until they uh, until they worked out they could introduce a moth from the place where this stump comes from and uh, that kind of uh, kept it in check and uh, you don't get so much of it now but uh, this is prickly pear and uh, it used to be in South Australia I believe and all through there and uh, all the sheep got tangled up in it, it was just terrible so all the paddocks ended up prickly pear and were basically un unproductive till people had to kind of put arsenic in them and uh, inject them with arsenic to kill them and uh, and uh, quite a lot of people got poisoned as well you know and, you know in those days there wasn't any safety or anything like that so anyway that's the history of the prickly pear in Australia the homestead owners have uh, got these uh, drums uh, prickly pear drums there they are along the uh, track here and and John would like you uh, you know if you see a prickly pear to cut cut it up you know cut it out and uh, drop it in these bins and he disposes of them somehow and over there you can see there's a goat don't know if you can see him just there running away from me now I'm still walking up this road and uh, I don't know how far I've got to go I've forgotten how far it is to the uh, telephone spot which is where a rock is where I might be able to I can definitely do a text but I might be able to call my wife before she goes to work I'm getting a bit puffed but uh, I'll just keep having to stop occasionally and and this is what I'm doing now so just get my uh, strength back and I'll keep going up sign here it says rescue bay and there's a walking track down there to a rescue bay which uh, you see that goat through there it's a daddy goat billy goat yeah the road's getting steep now and there's kind of a, uh, a dugout every uh, 20 meters and uh, all the way up this hill I hope that when I get to the top of the hill is uh, where Andy's lookout is or whatever it's called where I can phone up puffed especially going over these friggin uh, washout things they're pretty steep anyway we're getting there I keep saying it's another hundred meters I have to think about it like that and uh, there's a sign here it says turn the phone let it roam let it roam and it says ring ting ting I've already had a few so I'm gonna call it a day and see if I can actually get out from here and stop I'm having to walk to the top of the hill. A few messages uh, uh, come in but uh, I can't send one out from here so my wife's a bit worried about me so I'm gonna have to keep walking to the top of the hill. Hmm, onwards and upwards. Well I'm on top of the island and uh, this is Andy's lookout and you can see that's uh, down there is where I came in the first night uh, where that sand blow is down there but uh, and then I went round to White Bay and uh, anyway over here there's these kind of uh, rocks with stones on them and that's where people have had uh, managed to find uh, stand on top of one of those and you've got phone reception so I'm gonna give it a go rock here seems to be the most popular one so I'm gonna stand right by that and see what I happen so anyway I'm on Percy Island it's pouring down the rain at the moment and I'm bloody well uh, standing on a rock and uh, the trouble is when my phone gets wet it's uh, it's hard to operate it on those screens. Hey? Yeah, yeah. All right then, no worries. Okay, yeah, bye bye and uh, yeah, all right then, no worries. See ya. Well, I'm still working on Antonelli's boat just over there, but I just had to come back and get a couple of shackles, so I couldn't resist on taking my last sunset from uh, West Bay in Percy Island. 